Uh, one of the other you know, military issues talked about was when Rand Paul hit Marco Rubio for not being conservative when it comes to increasing military spending. You know, the crowd really seemed to side with Rubio and some of the other guys. Why aren't fiscal conservatives getting on the side of cutting defense spending when it's such a massive part of the budget? And unlike Medicare and Social Security, you can actually cut it. Peter? Well, uh, because the military cannot be challenged uh, in our country. You could have Hillary and Governor O'Malley and Bernie Sanders and, and pretty much any other person who's running for president on the stage, and they would answer the question exactly the same way. You don't cut uh, the defense budget significantly, if, if at all. Uh, Trump says, let's increase it. You, you just are not allowed to touch that in a uh, political campaign uh, in the United States. You simply have to support the military budget. Um, you have to support it because you've got companies who are donating to you, and, and it's just one of those hot-button issues, particularly on the, on the more conservative side. Um, it, it's kind of a, a ridiculous situation that we talk about cutting uh, money that goes to our own, uh, some of our most own vulnerable people, um, our, we cut money to our, our infrastructure. We cut money to, to whatever. I mean, good gracious, we can't have health care for Americans, but we can continue to spend millions of dollars on a single aircraft and, and those types of things. Uh, it remains probably the greatest threat to the United States that we're spending something like half of our, our discretionary budget on our military, we're spending more than, than any number of countries combined. And it's time for us, I wish it could be time for us, let me correct that, to take a hard look at that. But I don't think it's going to happen, Republican, Democrat, or, or whoever uh, goes in the White House. You know, flashback about six months, and it really looked like Rand Paul was going to be a really major player in this uh, campaign. Josh, why do you think his, his policies, which are so starkly different, obviously, from some of these other guys, just failed so, to live up to their potential so far? Well, I, I don't know. Uh, and I think that I think that Rand Paul has is sort of stumbled. He stumbled out, out of the gate. For example, he announced his campaign in front of an aircraft carrier, which – you know, that doesn't exactly send the same kind of message he was sending on the stage last night. In fact, I think it's because he knows he's kind of doesn't really have a chance that he's becoming, you know, Rand Paul again. Um, because remember, the conservatives, and this gets into the uh, context of, like, defining what a conservative and a liberal is. And, you know, just like gender and race, you, you whatever you say you are, you basically are. Um, but real conservatives right? Unless in the defense spending, they wouldn't want to completely build up um, the military like that. But most Republicans are not true conservatives that way. They don't want to give health care or food stamps to people, but they absolutely want the newest fucking tank and the biggest badass goddamn missile that we can have because America, fuck yeah. Um I think it's especially interesting that with today being Veterans Day, that, you know, the only question in any of the debates about veterans issues came during the undercard debate when they asked about um, the VA scandal. And the only main stage candidate of either party who said it was, you know, God bless him, Ben Carson is the only one who brought up veterans, the VA scandal and veteran suicide. So, you know, the military is a prop. And the veterans are a prop for Republicans and Democrats alike. You know, that when it really gets down to, to the issues that are affecting that community and things like that, they, they have no concern for it. You know, they'll, and the only time it'll ever come up is when people suggest, you know, if Bernie Sanders does say or Hillary Clinton says we want to cut the military, we'll be saying she wants to take medicine away from troops and, and things like that. It's it's only a tool, and it's enraging. Yeah, go ahead, Peter. And, uh, and I mean, Josh is, is, is right on point. I mean, the military has a prop. I mean, thanks for your service. Here's a free breakfast at Denny's. And then otherwise, you know, disappear again for a while, guys and girls, because it's kind of gross to see you sitting around, you know, missing limbs and stuff like that. You know, this has all gotten to the point of absurdity. It's like the interventions. I mean, even people 
who say, well, we should stop intervening as soon as you say, well, what about ISIS? Oh, yeah, well, that's different. We've got to stop ISIS, or they're going to be in Times Square ne next week. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's a shame. The problem of, our, our, of caring for veterans, this is not a complex, intractable, what could we possibly do to fix it kind of problem. It, it's a problem of resources. You, you simply, if you want to shorten the waiting times for veterans to see health uh, professionals, it's not that hard. Get more health professionals. The VA pays some of the lowest wages for, for doctors and medical uh, professionals uh, out there. Um, and so it's difficult for them to attract people. It's difficult for them to attract quality people. Raise the wages, put some more money in there, hire more doctors, get the technology uh, up from, from the grave so that people can, can book appointments online and things like that. And it's not hard. You've, you've suddenly impacted the veterans' health care situation dramatically. Go ahead and provide quality psychiatric care to, to veterans who suffer from PTSD instead of arguing about whether PTSD, if they're faking it or it's real, or, or simply handing out uh, drugs and tranquilizers or, or the latest fashion. I mean, it was a tiny, tiny little step that uh, Congress is going to allow VA doctors in states uh, where medical marijuana is legal to prescribe medical marijuana to, uh, to patients, uh, military patients who need it. But again, and, I mean, that remember, Peter, I was just going to add that remember that um, veterans who got medical marijuana on their own before also ran the risk of losing their benefits from the VA for using drugs. Exactly. And so, again, that, that tiny, tiny little step was, was, you know, is such a huge deal. Fixing this problem is very, very easy. We don't have to debate it. It shouldn't, it's not like climate change or Starbucks cups where there, you know, are polarized opinions. Just put some more money into it, leave a couple of tanks on the shelf, um, and this problem can be, can be resolved or, or at least significantly improved within a very short period of time. Really and, the, and the candidate who does that, uh, just one last thing, is that the candidate who, who would do that, if one candidate went out there and really just made veterans' issues their main platform, it's, it, it seems like it would be silly and, you know, in my uh, sort of, in my commentator and, and reporting on politics, I would have to say that, you know, there's way other, there's many other issues. But any candidate that came out there and was like the candidate for the vets, he would, he or she would lock down, um, I think 27% of U.S. population, um, are veterans, um, and as well as their families. families. So you have that, you have, huh? I think you meant families of veterans. No, no, uh, in the U.S., 24, I think 24, 25% of men are veterans, uh, from all over, from all, from Vietnam, Okay. Uh, and 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 now to be fair, that was like a couple years ago, so I don't know, but I I do believe it's around twenty five, twenty six percent of the population have some military service, and um, and then if you take in their families, there will be. Uh, so it's just that's a huge voting block that they could own. Keep in mind that when we talk about doing things like, like Josh and, and I are proposing for the veterans, it, it's kind of a stealth thing that runs right into one of the other significant uh, parts of the Republican platform, which is we have to fuck over our own people as much as possible and not give them anything if we can get away with it. We've got to cut, I mean, overtly, the Republicans talk about cutting back on food stamps, cutting back on unemployment, cutting back on subsidies, cutting back on this, cutting back on that. You know, people will work, uh, they should starve to death. I think there's a quiet undercurrent of that that sometimes seeps into the veterans' uh, argument that, you know, we really shouldn't give away too much. Um, with the veterans, you can't talk about them the same way you can talk about poor people um, who get blamed for their own uh, problems. They're lazy, they're stupid, uh, they have too many kids, uh, they're the wrong color, whatever. You know, you got to play the veteran thing a little bit differently, but I, I wonder if it's not part of the same mindset that says, you know, the government really shouldn't give away stuff uh, to help uh, our own people. 
I thought that these are all great points, but not one of them did I hear last night on that stage. In fact, the only real one I heard was uh, get rid of the VA. Josh, as a veteran, how do you feel about getting rid of the VA entirely? Uh, that's nonsense. It's ridiculous. The VA, I mean, the VA has its problems, but, you know, when the people who actually are in the VA and getting the care are pretty much usually satisfied with, with what they have. And I know that uh, in recent years, the VA has made a, a big push to um, do their job better, and they're staffed now with a significant percentage of people who serve. Um, now, that said, the, the VA is not the sole answer. You know, the idea of going to the VA, and if that's not um, – uh, if that's not convenient or easy, you can go to, to private care. Um, th those work for the, the people who are suffering mental um, distress, addiction, um, and small, like, you know, disability claims like their back, their knees, things like that. But when you look at, at, at um, people seriously wounded in war, like people who've lost limbs, I mean, the advances we've made in the past 10 years for prosthetics is, is just is amazing. It's, 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 it's astounding. In fact, they, um, uh, and that's all because the VA is focused specifically on these type of injuries and these type of patients. So I don't think getting rid of the VA is at all the answer, but I do understand why they would say that because, you know, it's the government and people often tout the VA as an example of good socialism. So every Republican is thinking VA because, again, it's separate from the veterans, even though it shouldn't be.